Good morning. Hello. Welcome, family, to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. Thanks for all those tuning in on our love stream this morning, too. And is it me, or do you all just always look that good? You look so good. I don't know if it's springtime or what it is, but you look beautiful. Um, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. So let's get on with it. Let's start this beautiful day with a song. Sing out bright, loud and clear. I can see clearly now. Living. My name is Linda Brewer, and I'm so blessed to have the privilege of welcoming all of you beloveds who are here in the room with us, and those of you who are love streaming wherever you may be. Since we can't see you or talk to you or hug you out there, we would really appreciate if you'd share your name and where you are so that we might at least feel some connection with you and so that you all can connect with each other this morning. Our practitioners serving in today's service, our amazing, wonderful practitioners are Lana Cairns, who will be sharing our reading and leading us in prayer, and our dear Katie Hernandez over there, who is holding high watch throughout this service, knowing that the best and highest is unfolding as we share this sacred time together this morning. Our center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among religions. We honor every pathway by which people seek to know and connect with the divine, and we work on our individual consciousness so that we can help make the world a better place. So this morning, as we say our purpose statement together, I invite you all to embody this 
after our service by reaching out and saying hello to someone that you don't know or at least someone you don't know very well. And then after you do that for a while, go hang out with your friends. All right, our purpose statement. We are an open, welcoming community celebrating our divinity, loving our humanity, and nurturing our journeys of spiritual discovery. Thank you. Our theme for April is reconnecting, renewing and refreshing, and rewiring, <laughs> which the Rev added. And her talk title for today is Spring Has Sprung Utah Style. <laughs> and she's really gotten an introduction to Utah style. We keep saying to her, it's not always like this, really. Because <laughs> for those you don't know, she moved here from California in January. So. And when she did, she made a great personal sacrifice, quite frankly, um, because her wife, Bryn Turner, could not retire from her job in California until the end of this summer. So we're very grateful to Bryn, who also made that sacrifice. But today, we're so very blessed because Bryn is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I think last time she was here, she caught whatever bug I have that turned my hair purple. And <laughs> yay for her. <laughs> More, it's coming for you, Jean. <laughs> okay, Bryn will be back for, with us to celebrate Reverend Cindy's installation ceremony as our senior minister um, on Friday, May the 19th. And what we've discovered, we sent out evites to everyone on our mailing list, and we've discovered that for a lot of people, those went into their spam folders. Um, and so, if you haven't gotten the evite and you want to attend, please sign up at the concierge table. Do we have that, Sue? A sign-up sheet for RSVP? If not, okay, then I lied. Don't do it there. <laughs> but we can get a piece of paper. But if you'll send an email to our practitioner prayer request email, slcslpractitioners at gmail.com. I don't expect you to remember that. Um, and let us know because this is how much space we have and a lot of people are coming. So please RSVP. So thank you. All right, so I wanna encourage all of you to be creative and to come up with a fun event to host for our food fun and friends fundraising event. The goal of this event is to bring together members of our community along with friends and family and others from the greater Salt Lake community to gather for a fun event where beautiful memories get created while we raise funds to, to support the growth and expansion of our center. The way it works is you create and host an event. Um, other people will bid to be part of that event and the money you raise will go to the center. Um, so we do have hosting forms. They look like this. They are at the table outside. So please pick one of those up and fill it out. Um, there's some fun things happening like Ruth, bowling with Ruth and Robert. <laughs> Not to be confused that. with Robert and Ruth, as I did the last time. If, if you have more questions about it, please see one of our board members, Drew, Robert, Jerry, Teresa. Steve's not here. Or don't see her after service for stuff like that. Do not talk business to the minister on Sunday morning. Her mind is not there for that. <laughs> She's here to be pastoral to you. All right, if you miss renewing your membership at the annual meeting, please do so by the end of the month because we'd hate to lose you. And if you're new to the center and you're considering membership, we do have a sign-up sheet for that on the table. And you can sign up. There is an orientation class that happens so that you know what you're committing to when you commit to be a member. So please add your name and we'll let you know when that gets scheduled. All right. 
If you are here for the very first time, now that you know a little bit more about us, if you are willing to let us know you're here, would you raise your hand or stand so we could welcome you, please? Come on, there are faces out there I don't recognize. <laughs> All right. All right, see, I knew there were faces out there I don't recognize. All right, I may forget your name, but I usually will remember your face. All right, so if you haven't done so, we have a welcome packet that has the Science of Mind magazine in it. It is a gift for you, and you can pick one of those up at the concierge table. We affirm for all of you and for everyone in this room that you will experience a blessing here this morning. And I know that's true because our amazing special music is Leslie, <laughs> and our band is fantastic, and so is our minister. So, all right. Remember 24-7, if you want more information and get forms and all that kind of stuff, you can do that on our website, submit prayer requests, all of that. That is at www.spirituallyfree.org. All right, as I do, whenever I'm here, I remind you that our center was founded on, and it is grounded in prayer. Our professional prayer practitioners spend a lot of years training in the art and science of affirmative prayer, and they are so ready to pray for you. You can grab one of them wearing their stole, uh, purple stole, after the, after the service. You can put a request in the prayer box at the concierge table, or you can put one in on the website. And if you do that, all of the practitioners will hold you in prayer this week. So we encourage you to take advantage of that. And so I invite you right now to allow yourself to settle in, connect with that God that lives within you, and allow Lana's reading and the centering music to take you to that place to prepare you for her. <laughs> so as Reverend Linda said, um, we are trained in the art of spiritual mind treatment. So we take two years of courses. We have to pass the written exam, an oral exam, and then it's two, you know, two years of practitioner study, so it's four years in all. Um, we serve our community by teaching classes, by being on platform, by praying for all of you here, here and, and beyond. And we really love to do it. So please, if anything is heavy on your heart, any issue, we're here for you um, after service. So I just want to say that. And also, Selena and I will be teaching a class called Building a Healing Consciousness starting May 8th. So if you want to get more information and just deepen your practice, it's an eight-week class. The readings aren't too much, but it's really about the experience that you'll be um, having with us. So I hope you can join us for that. Today's reading is adapted from Megan Dawn's book, Falling into the Arms of God, Meditations on St. Teresa of Avila. St. Teresa reminds us to seek your true self in God and you will find God lives inside you. The founding fathers of the Carmelite order were hermits who gathered on Mount Carmel in the Holy Land during the early days of Christendom, where they lived solitary lives of prayer and contemplation. Their aim was to seek and find God, the pearl of the hidden treasure. Teresa reminds us that original Carmelite quest, saying that we must return to these simple origins and not become distracted by other desires and by more complex philosophical pathways. We must strengthen the soul and dig for this treasure to discover the truth about where this pearl resides. As we progress further into the castle, we must remain sincere about being faithful to our inner journey. There are many ways we may become distracted. We may simply become a little lazy about our meditation and prayer time. We may feel it important to be working for the good of others that are in this world, or others may influence our priorities. Before we realize what has occurred, we may find ourselves disconnected from source and less balanced in ourselves. 
Return to your inner dwelling, said Teresa, and remember these sacred words. Beloved, since you are my room, my house, and dwelling, if at any time through your distracted ways I find the door tightly closed, don't look for me outside yourself. Go within. so grateful for the Salt Lake Center of Spiritual Living, a place that reminds me of who I truly am, that I am born in the image and likeness of God, where there are no mistakes. I am grateful for this warm spring day. I am grateful for Reverend Cindy's wife, Bryn, coming here and having a wonderful weekend with us. I am grateful for all the good that is in this world. I am grateful for my neighbors creating sandbags to block the flow of water. I am grateful for all the good that I see all the time. So I know that there's just one, one God one source, one power, one essence, one love, one truth that is in everything we see, everything we experience, that there is just one of us. So I know that one source breathes through me. I know that one source creates me. I know that one source, I return to it. I know that my money is God's money. I know that my good intentions come from the flow of God. That God is in me, around me, through me all the time. So I don't have to discover it, I just pivot to it. I remove the curtain of my true identity. That I am whole complete and perfect here right here and right now so I am unified with that source that lives through me sustains me and guides me 
in all that I do all the time. So I bless this service. I bless Reverend Cindy's message that is on point, that inspires us, that lives through us during this week. I am grateful and bless this all these musicians, everyone who serves this Sunday. I am grateful and, and bless everybody who is here today who remind me of my true nature. And so I take this prayer, these words, and I place it in the arms of spirit that always says yes for its highest evolution. And so together with one heartbeat, we simply say, and so it is. Thank you, Lana. They would never, ever say it, but our minister and practitioners are superheroes. The purple stoles they wear, they should be capes. <laughs> and they would never be so presumptuous, but here's their, their secret power. They know and see the truth about each one of us. And just helping guide us toward that same realization is such a gift that they give. Um, I encourage you to make good use of that. Even just as a reminder, even if your life is just coasting like mine is right now, it always can be better. There's always more that can be opened up to us, more good. As we sing this next song, I want you to take that little message I gave and, and work it into these words that we'll sing together. The song is called Awaken Now. And this is the gift that can be given by a practitioner is to help us see and know to awaken to the truth within us. Awaken now. Oh, great spirit, awareness of the world, still small voice, and no as my own. Show
Thanks so much. Thanks so, so much for singing along. Did you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. It's my privilege now to introduce our special music. Our beloved keyboardist and singer, songwriter, um, my right hand woman, for sure, um, in this group, uh, Leslie Monroe, is our special music today. And as a extra special treat, she's brought her daughter, Kristen, to sing and play with her. So welcome, Kristen and Leslie. All right, so when I was choosing the music a week ago, <laughs> I, um, I chose a song from my Lullaby album, and it has a violin part on it. And I remembered, oh, Kristen plays violin. And, but she, she didn't learn to play until she was an adult. And so through, through uh, this is the first time we played together. Uh, well, not, not the first time musically, but with this thing, yeah. I, yeah, so. <laughs> I'm self-taught, so, you know, it's like, okay. So I said, hey, would you like to come play along on this? And hey. the most the greatest compliment of my whole life was when she was practicing this with the recording and her little, my little granddaughter, Lily, three years old, said, what? Um, and she just comes up, it's a pretty song, Mommy. Pretty song, Mommy. <laughs> Best compliment ever. <laughs> All right, we ready? We'll follow each other. Sounds good. So this is one big improvisation. We'll follow each other and hopefully we don't get lost. <laughs>
beautiful, beautiful mother-daughter duet. Ah, we are so blessed here at the center, aren't we? With our music team, our music ministry, with all the talent that resides in this room. It's great to be with all of you today. So welcome on this bright, sunshining spring day. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so as Linda mentioned, our monthly theme today has been reconnecting, renewing, refreshing, and I added rewiring. And some of you are following me on Facebook because I'm doing a rewiring project on Facebook. So for those of you that are friends with me on Facebook, make sure that you join in. So. Spring has sprung Utah style. <laughs> That's what I'm here to talk about today. And since I come up with titles sometimes weeks and months ahead, <laughs> I often think, what was I thinking? <laughs> How is this going to turn into a talk? But it always does. You know, as I sit with it during the week, something always lands. And that's what happens. And as I reflect on this particular, <laughs> this particular talk title, I've been inundated with the foundations class and reading Science of Mind. So that's where it led me. Not to the big part of the book, but to the glossary. And sometimes I'll just take the book and open it up and see what it is that I need to remember today. So I ended up in this area on the glossary called passive activity. So bear with me for a moment. I'm going to read this passage and I'm going to break it down into four quadrants so that we can go through it one at a time. To be passive and also to be active means to be non-resident to those vibrations which are and seminal to our peace. While at the same time we declare for the condition we desire, this is different from enduring a condition. Pay attention to that. While in the midst of things one seems unable to change to his or her liking, we must practice knowing with all the God mind within us that the condition we desire is present in its fullness. It is present in our consciousness, complete and perfect. A person is actively conscious that the invisible perfection is present while being all appearance in the midst of imperfection. While being passive to imperfection. Emerson must have meant this when he said, I see action to be good when the need is and the sitting still is also good. In our mind, we may sit still in undesirable conditions and at the same time, be very active in creating desirable conditions. Okay, I know this is a lot. Give me a moment here. <laughs> Since we're in the middle of this theme, reconnecting, renewing, and refreshing, I find myself returning to the basics, the basics of prayer. And I know that affirmative prayer treatments are the through way in which I reconnect, I renew, I refresh my life. So here we are <laughs> in this springtime. 
So again, I, I'm going to break this down, but I just want to go back to springtime for a moment because what are the things that come to mind when you think of springtime? For me, spring cleaning. <laughs> My wife knows that about me. Flowers blooming, nature coming out from hibernation, and us as well coming out from hibernation. Uh, warmer days, opening up the windows and letting that air in your, in your home. Going to the park, riding my bike, planning summer adventures. So what are some of yours when you think of springtime? Maybe just turn to a neighbor and tell them one or two things. <laughs> great, great. I love it. So back to back to that first line of this passive activity. To be passive and also to be active means to be non-resident resident to those vibrations which are in seminal to our peace. Let me just say, I had to look that word up. Okay, so it's like a, a violent, it's, it's, you know, it's a disturbing, right? While at the same time we declare the condition we desire, this is different from enduring a condition. So back to springtime. <laughs> enduring, right? So, first of all, non-resistance is something we don't want as a priority of answered prayer. So let me say more about that and enduring. The first day of spring, you guys, was on March 21st. <laughs> um, this is what I did on March 21st. I woke up, I opened my drapes, and I saw snow on my balcony, and snow on the trees, and snow on the road. And I thought, wait a minute, where's the blue skies? Where are the trees? The trees aren't blooming yet. No, it can't be. More snow? <laughs> so I found myself enduring. I was enduring. I wasn't really going with the flow. I wasn't really accepting. <laughs> I thought, wait a minute, uh, well, okay, I have to be fair here. A lot of places in our, in our country, uh, around the globe, have gone through a winter that's been like none other, including California. Many days I talked to, to Brent on the phone, and she yet again had to convince our dogs to go out in the rain to do their thing, which is no easy task. <laughs> Right, so I found myself enduring this condition of the continued, continuing winter. Um, I've since found out that you all call it sprinter. <laughs> right, so if you're watching us online, you're learning something about Utah, okay? So, So honestly, I, I, did, I did have expectations of what I know spring to be. That was my come from. In fact, it, it's one of my favorite times of year when I walk the dogs. I stop continuously. Well, they stop and sniff everything. They have to deal with me stopping to take pictures of all the blooms and the trees and the flowers. So we have, we have a deal when we're out there walking together, right? But here's, here's what happened for me. When I opened that window and my heart sank, <laughs> there's some conditions that I wanted to change. No, I don't think that I can change the weather. They were inner conditions of my heart. 
So I wanted to change that inner condition of what I call lack of flow because I was in this hibernation mode that I've never been in before. I found myself, you know, I wasn't walking the dogs every day and I found myself not wanting to go outside and deal with, you know, driving in the snow and things that I'm not accustomed to. So I found this condition of lack of flow in my body temple, in my life. I also felt honestly lonely. My wife is 750 some odd miles away. My dogs are 750 miles away and I was in this home alone. It's the first time I've lived alone in years and years and years. I've, I'm a kind of a serial monogamous kind of person. I'm, I'm always with my beloveds. The other thing that was going on with me is I was noticing that that darkness of the, the rain and the clouds was kind of dampering my spirit. And I know you can all relate because you all live in this, the same area. <laughs> well, and even, even in California, every time I'd call home, it's raining again. Oh my gosh, it's raining again. Oh, so I know that we can all, we can all relate to this. So I know that when I came here, it's my intention to embrace this new place. My intention to get to know all of you and, and get to know a new set of friends and, and a new area and be adventurous to, to see what this beautiful place called Utah is all about. And since I wasn't doing that, <laughs> because I didn't want to go out, <laughs> what I found was I was being passive. And yet this community reminded me of my desired conditions. See, coming here on a Sunday and being with all of you creates this spark in my heart. Coming here for even a meeting or a class or whatever reason I'm coming into being in this place with all of you brings me right back to those conditions of the heart that I desire. So little did I know that I really was passively sitting with all of that. So... The second part of this definition, while in the midst of things one seems unable to change in their, to their liking, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we must practice knowing with all the God mind within us that, can, that the condition we desire is present in its fullness. Ooh, ooh, I love that because we're talking about the right now. We're talking about practicing our practice. We're talking about prayer. We're, we're talking about meditation. We're talking about these practices that we have within this philosophy that are available to us all the time. Going to that God mind within us. Also, knowing that Truth with the capital T. But I'm not going to dig into that yet because you have to come back next week because that's the name of my talk title, That Truth with the Capital T. So, as Megan Don noted in the writings of Teresa of Avila, their aim was to seek and to find God, the pearl of wisdom of hidden treasure. Teresa reminds us of, fa of the Father's original quest, saying that we must return to those simple origins not, and not become distracted by other desires. We must strengthen the soul and dig for this treasure, she said, to discover the truth about where this pearl resides. 
This pearl resides here. Everybody has this pearl. So the third part of that active, uh, passive activity is it is present in our consciousness, complete and perfect, a person actively conscious that the invisible per perfection is present while being all appearances in the midst of imperfection is practicing activity while being passive to imperfection. I know this is a mind bender here. <laughs> I see some head shaking. What are you doing, Reverend Cindy? I know. But let me tell you one of my, one of my superpowers. I can make it simple for you. <laughs> so to make it simple for you, whoops, we're talking about accepting what is. Now, in a prayer treatment... You go to a practitioner, in your practitioner and they ask you, what would you like prayer for? And they'll usually ask you some more guiding questions to find out what condition or quality of life that you're wanting prayer for. And here's the thing. That condition that you're wanting can't outpicture if you're actually sitting in the condition that is. Do you get that? It's subtle and yet profound. It's complicated and yet so simple. So, back to spring and sprung Utah style. Back to the basics of oneness within the snow, within the rain, within the cold, is that perfect imperfection called spring. That tree, okay, let me explain to you. In my, my townhome that I'm in, I've got these uh, um, two big windows, one in the, in the living room and one in the bedroom. And I open up the drapes, and I've got my balcony there. And there's the balcony, and then there's lots of trees to look at. And since I've been here until maybe the last week, all those trees have been barren. They've been trunks and twigs. And they usually have snow on them. And I, I, I check it every day. It's like one of the first things I do. I get up, and I go to the drapes, and I'm, What's here today, right? So, <laughs> just as my active consciousness knew and knows that the rains and the snow and the dark skies bring the blooms and the blossoms. We can't have one without the other. Even sometimes if it appears to be opposite than the condition that I'm treating or praying for. So as I practice my practice and I do my prayers and I do my meditations, the activity is in the works through being passive to the imperfection. So I know that there's prayer requests in this room that are more than just Where's spring? Where's the flowers? What's going on? There's prayer requests in this room that have to do with very serious things like diagnoses, how you feel in your body temple, the state of your finances, the state of your relationships. And what I'm trying to tell you is the gift is in the imperfection. Where we get to, get to, is accepting what is. See, until we can do that, until we can really know that whatever's going on in our life is there for our good, we won't get the condition that we desire. I know many times in my life I have prayed for finances to be better. 
And every time I did that, I realized what I was doing was I was reaffirming that I didn't have. See, here's, here's the difference. Here's the switch. You pray and are grateful for what you do have. You pray from that feeling and space in your heart of having all your needs met. If you pray from a place of lack, you get more lack. So, the last part of that quote. Emerson must have meant this when he said, I see action to be good when the need is and sitting still to also be good. Our ma in our mind, we may still be in undesirable conditions and at the same time be very active in creating desirable conditions. That's what's ours to do, you guys. That's the golden nugget of prayer. This is how prayer works. As we sit in those undesirable, uh, undesirable conditions, we have the opportunity to see, feel, and know that perfection lies in those imperfections. Right there in the middle of any situation that you're in, you get to accept and love and know that those imperfections are there for your good. And I know that's, that can be a hard pill to swallow for some that are in the midst of intense things in their life. I'm not trying to belittle that in any way, shape, or form. And if there's some way that you can get to that place of knowing that in the midst of that challenge is something so much bigger and so much brighter for your life. And if you can't know that for yourself, there's practitioners here. Our beautiful ones with their purple stoles and maybe someday capes, as Rick said. <laughs> I like that idea. We've been trained. Yes, I'm a minister, but I'm first and foremost a practitioner. It's been 20 years now. And it's my blessing and, and privilege to have someone sit before me and know that truth. To know that they are perfect, whole, and complete. And I know it's hard for us to know that sometimes when they're, we're in the midst of pain or suffering or, or whatever's going on in our life. So, I just have to say this real quick. And it's an ongoing thing that's happening. And that is that last week, Tuesday, I think it was, I got the text that my aunt had a stroke. And um, my, my cousin, my cousins are very positive and upbeat and I started texting with them. And I said to my cousin, Debbie, I said, I know it's gonna end well, all is well, it's gonna be okay. Now the human side of me, you guys, I, I have to be honest, it was scary. You don't, I, you know, this is an, an active, beautiful being that, that goes to the gym every day and, and goes on cruises all the time that, that is always out of the house doing things with, with friends and family. So I, I just couldn't imagine um, my aunt not being able to get out of bed. It was, it was downright scary. But the first place I went to was prayer. To understand whatever that condition is, is something that is for her good. The next thing that happened was we all banded together to support her and love her. And then the doctors did what doctors do. They start investigating what's going on here. And it turns out it wasn't a stroke. Now they're still getting her better and she is much better. Basically they thought it was a uh, reaction to a shingles vaccine that she had a few days prior. And it looked like, it looked like the outward appearance looked like a stroke. So, now she's not back to 100%, but she is feeling so much better. I am so grateful that the first place that I go to is prayer. 
even when it looks imperfect. I get to know the truth of who she is. And I also get to tell my friends in this room to bring on the prayer. So, back to this thing called Sprinter. <laughs> and those undesirable connect, um, conditions that I was sitting in. I am so incredibly grateful for this community keeping me centered and grounded in knowing that what I was here to do was connect with all of you. And I'm so incredibly grateful to now see the flowers popping out and blooming and the tree in front of my ba balcony actually getting leaves on the tree. So yes, I am so incredibly grateful for all of this and for all of you. So let's pray. As I take in a nice deep breath, I ask you to breathe with me, breathe in deeply through your nose. Hold it at the top. And exhale. Again, I, I start my prayer with gratitude to just set the table. I set the table with gratitude because I am living from this place of gratitude, grateful for this beautiful, bright, sunshiny day, grateful for this community that is so special, bright, filled with creativity, wisdom, abundance. Grateful for this powerful music ministry that opens our hearts every time we hear them. And grateful to know that there is but one. One power, one presence, one love. It doesn't matter what you call this one. Whether it's God, Buddha, Allah, Jehovah, Yeshua, the way, force, creator, Lord, divine inspiration, the big heart. So many names and so many faces and yet only one. One that's in, in every and through each snowflake that has fallen through this sprinter in every branch of every tree in every blade of grass that is now popping up in every flower every bloom every leaf see it's everywhere whether we can see it or not hear it or not this power this presence i call them sometimes particles of god these particles of God are, are in everything. They're in the moments of silence between the words. They're also in every note and every color on the rainbow. And knowing that is the truth, I know that these particles of God are in me, as me, through me. Every cell, every atom, every word, every reaction every condition, every perfection and imperfection. And I know the same is true for each and every soul within earshot of this prayer, whether in this room or online. We are all unified with this power and presence. There's no one that is separate. There's only this unifying particles that are here now every moment every moment that ever was and every moment that will ever be connected powerfully so knowing that is the truth of who and what we are I claim and know for each of us in this room for anyone that has a prayer request whether it is for abundance of health money 
relationships, love. Beautiful sanctuaries to live in for all needs being met and then some. That your prayer is my prayer too. And I claim and know that these conditions that we sit in are not for us to cast away, but to sit still passively while creating what's next. So I ask for you right now to say your name out loud and then say the names of the beloveds that are wanting prayer in this moment. Cindy. Michael, Anna, Mom, Brad, Sandra, and John, Madeline, Marilyn, Kent, all my beloveds, Kimberly, Daryl, Melissa, Paul. So those names have been cast into this beautiful vibration of prayer. So know that as it has been requested, the universe always says, yes, my beloved, this and so much more. So for this, I am thankful and grateful for answered prayer. I am thankful and grateful for all the conditions that have been prayed upon, knowing that within the condition is the beautiful, perfect answered prayer. So I just release it into the law, into these spiritual principles that we study here at this beautiful center. And as I know that they have been requested, I know that they are done. So we release our hands, take our hands off the wheel and let this law do what it does. It says, yes, my beloved. And please, Say with me to anchor this prayer. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Ashe. Thank you. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. And the ushers are getting ready. They're going to be in the back of the room. As you get your offerings ready, I just say this. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this community. Thank you for showing up on this beautiful day. Thank you for all that you give and all that you are. So the ushers are coming forward. And I'm thankful. Thankful for Mother Nature doing her thing even within the snowflakes <laughs> to produce these beautiful flowers that I see blooming for seeing the trees blossom and we are so blessed Thank you, Sue and Nancy, as they continue to come up through the room. If you missed the basket, you can just come forward. It's with much appreciation that we accept these gifts, and when they get back up here, we will bless them together. Thank you. Thank you all again. So let's extend our hearts through our hands, pointing toward these baskets of promissory notes. And repeat after me. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. For every promissory note. For every promissory note. It goes out into the world. It goes out into the world. And it returns to us. It returns to us. Multiplied abundantly. Multiplied abundantly. How grateful we are. How grateful we are. And so it is. Thank you, ladies.
So let's hear some more from Leslie and Kristen. So since Kristen's here, I couldn't not feature her for my next musical number. When her father and I divorced, we know that uh, any breakup where children are involved and anybody's involved, you, you can't escape the lessons. And there, uh, our family looked like she and her three siblings ended up living on their father's parents' dairy farm for years and they wanted that and I knew they would be safe there we just didn't foresee the the hardships that happened with that so she left my residential care at age 10 so whenever I get together here with her it's another re-celebration and she wrote me a song and she gave it to me on Mother's Day which is coming up right and it made me cry and I asked if she would sing it, not because she wrote it for me, but it's a really good song. It might make you cry too. And this is about renewing a relationship, renewing springtime, reconnecting, because when we did that, uh, this song was part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mom is the first word that you ever heard me say. Some things may change, but others stay the same. I'm still that little girl who loves you in her own little way. And Mom, there's so many things I wish that I could change. Like the time we lost with broken heart and pain. But the past is far behind and tomorrow shines once again. So I write this simple melody cause my heart needs to be heard. To remind you what I never got to say before with simple little words. every day but you still stand tall and smile your tears away you may not see but you're my hero more every day and mom until today i never noticed all you've done all the things that helped me be what i've become and words cannot express what it means to call you my mom so I write this simple melody Cause my heart needs to be heard To remind you what I never got to Say before with simple little words harmony that happens in, in family. Um, 
I love the healing possibility. Um, that was such a beautiful sentiment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and Reverend Cindy, thank you for that message. To know that we, that, that tolerating, enduring, complaining about what is, is a lot different than accepting. Um, I believe that's what grace is, is just nurturing that state of mind to accept what is. That's truly being present with, with what is. Thank you. How lucky are we? Huh? So I invite you to stand, everyone. Let's celebrate this wonderful day. And knowing this truth, together we can change the world. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe it's not too late. Together we can change the world. Change the